This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, Bruchma <clears throat> welcome everyone. Um, Tonight's share is sponsored by Yedidi, Rav Dovi Ben Shushan, one of the Chasra Abanam in the Syrian community. We want to bless him with good health. Gazent, Brach of Atzlacha, in Harbatsa Satoira, Vachol in Yanov, Adbiyasko El Tzedak. Okay, so. Um, we have a few shurim now in the Bein HaMetzarim in the three weeks. And uh, this past Shabbos was Shabbos Mavarchim Av. And this Friday, as Hashem, will be the Rosh Chodesh Av. So the first uh, order of business tonight is we want to be Ma'ayin into the name of the month, the month Av. Why is it called the month of Av? What is the meaning of the month? Even though the names of the months are not of Jewish origin, but we already uh, explained many times that if it becomes part of Minog Yisrael, and it becomes part of the corpus of uh, Machsheves Yisrael. So even if it's borrowed from the Umay Sa'ilam, but ein dvarim gedoylam einam b'mikra, great things are not coincidental. So what is the significance of the month Av? Why is it called the month Av? So yeah, we've said in the past Av uh, stands for Eloba. Elul is coming, but ein beis hamedrash b'li chidush. Every time we gather together, we always have bez uh, Hashem new chidushim. Okay, so let's begin by uh, reviewing a Gemara. I've learned this Gemara many, many times, but uh, recently when I thought about this Gemara, this Gemara hit me in a completely new light. And actually, the tonight's subject maybe is one of my, maybe my favorite subject, maybe one of two favorite subjects. The Gemara says like this: After the episode of Kamsa bar Kamsa where the Roman, the Roman government was instigated, that uh, they were told that the Jewish people, they, they denigrate the Romans, and if the Romans were to send the carbon, with, uh, they wouldn't bring the carbon. That's why Bakamsa made a little bit of a, a nick in the lip of the carbon or on the eyelid of the carbon. And they sent a, a general to go uh, conquer Yushalayim, to attack Yushalayim. What was the name of the general? Shadar Ilavayu Niron Kezar. They sent the Caesar Niron Ki Ka'asi, when Niron was coming, Shada Gira Lemizrach, he, he threw the arrow, he shot the arrow to the east, Asa Nafal Yerushalayim, and it fell to Yerushalayim. Lamarav, he sent the arrow to the west, Asa Nafal Yerushalayim. La'arba Ruches Hashemayim, Asa Nafal Yerushalayim. So in every direction he shot the arrow, it headed toward Jerusalem. So that was a portent, that was an omen that he would be successful in conquering Jerusalem. So then he tried another trick. He wanted to have a child read a Pasuk. That was considered um, a supernatural way to determine what the future has in store. He asked the child, Tell me what Pasuk you're learning. So he said, the Pasuk I'm learning is, God will um, avenge the Jewish people through Edom. In other words, the Pasuk says, I will a place my vengeance through Edom against the Jewish people, which basically means God will take retribution against the Jewish people through Edom and then wipe his hands away with Edom. Meaning Edom would, would destroy us, but then God would punish Edom. So Niron Kezar says, what does God want from me? He wants me to do his dirty work and then he's going to punish me? Meaning Niron Kezar realized that he was just acting as a puppet. He would destroy Jerusalem and then God would, 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 would wipe, uh, wipe the floor with him. So what did he do? Says the Gemara, and this Gemara is the Hakdama to the Chorban, because right after this episode it says, Shalach Ilavayu Aspasyonus Kezar. They sent Vespasian, and then Vespasian was appointed the, the emperor, and then he sent his son Titus. So this Gemara is the Hakdama to the Chorban. What does the Gemara say? Arak, he fled. Vaozal, he went. Vegayir, and he converted. Vinafak Minei Rameir. And Rameir came from him. The Hakdama to the Chorban Beis Amikdash was that Niron Kezar had a change of heart. He ran away, he fled, and who came from him? Reb Meir. I've seen this so many times, and finally this year, the Siyat Hashemayat hit me like a ton of bricks. What's the Hakdama to the Chorban Beis Amikdash? The creation of the Tana Reb Meir. That's the Hakdama. That's the intro to Chorban. The intro to Chorban is the creation of Reb Meir. And Bezus Hashem will see Neflois Mitayra Seinu. Why is this the Hakdama to Chorben Beis Hamikdash? Let's analyze another important thing. The Gemara says in Baba Basra, the Gemara asks a stira about the formation, the position of the Kruvim. The Gemara says that one pasuk indicates they faced each other. Pneim El Achiv, they faced each other. Um, the Gemara asks Vahaksiv Pneim Labayis that they faced away from each other. 
So it's a big shiloh. Were they facing each other or not facing each other? One pasuk sounds like they, they, uh, they looked at each other. Like, you know, when you first get married, you, when you, you're facing And then the next pasuk says, well, after like 25 years, you know, you're fa- what's going on? Did the Kruvim like each other? Did they not like each other? Says the Gemara, no. It depends on the behavior of the Jewish people. When we did what we needed to do, when we did the will of God, the Kruvim reflected the relationship we had with the Rebbe Shalom, and they faced each other as the Rebbe Shalom shows his countenance to us. But when we don't do the will of God, they faced away from each other. They were back to back, indicating that God was displeased with us. So if you would take a poll, you know, of most people, what would you think the positioning of the Kruvim was at the time that the Goyim went in to destroy the base of Mikdash? You would think, intuitively, logically, that they must have been back to back because we know for sure that was a time and yet the Gemara in Yuma says an incredible thing the Gemara says like this even though sometimes the Kruvim were back to back and sometimes they were facing each other but there were times that the Kruvim were actually embracing each other and hugging each other when the Gemara in Chagigo says that when they opened up the Paroiches in the times that the Jews went to be Oile Regal the Kruvim would be embracing each other yeah so the Gemara says in Yuma the Gemara says there's a Pasuk that says the, the Kruvim were embracing each other. Like a man who embraces his accompaniment. When the Gentiles entered the Heichal, they saw the cherubs were embracing each other. How is that possible? We just said in the Gemara of Basra that when we did not do the will of God, what? The Kruvim were back to back. And here, not only were they facing each other, they were actually embracing each other. Now in the past, we've said over from the, the Bnei Saskar, who quotes the Maggid of Mezrich, right? I was just with the Reb Chaim over here, we were, we were by his kever, in Anapoli, right next to Reb Zusha. We took the bus there, and then to get down the dirt road, you have to take a behema to drag you there. But we were zeicha to be there just a few days ago. And um, we said over the pshat of the Magid. But tonight we're going to say over the pshat of the Rimagash, the Rebbe of the Rambam. Quote in the Shittim Kometz says, Masech the Baba Vasra. The, the Rimagash says that how could it be that when the Goyim entered the Heichal to destroy the base of Mikdash, they saw the Kruvim embracing each other. He says on the fourth line, uh, number five, The rest of the year, they were not embracing, only miraculously when the Jewish people went to be Oile Regal, they saw that the Kruvim were embracing each other. When the Goyim entered the Hechal, they were also embracing each other miraculously, just like they were embracing during the Alila Regal. Why? To show the Goyim how much the Rebbein Shalom loved Klal Yisrael. So just like when we went to be Oile Regal, the Rebbein Shalom miraculously made the Kruvim embracing each other to show us how much the Rebbein Shalom loved us, when the Goyim entered the Heichal, the Rebbein Shalom made the Kruvim embrace each other to show us, to show the Goyim how much the Rebbein Shalom loves us. So the question is, what exactly does the Rimagash mean? Why did the Rebbe Hashem make this miracle to show the Goyim how much the Rebbe Hashem loves us? What Toyelas is it? Asks the Sefer Shvilei Pinchas Tavshin Ayin Beis. What does the Rimagash mean? Why was it necessary for the Rebbe Hashem to show the Gentiles how much he loved us? Why now? Why at this interval? Why was it so important when the Goyim entered the Heichal specifically now? So it must be. Right? Mm-hmm. What the Rimagash is telling us is the Rebbe specifically at the time of the Churban, when you would think he is casting us away, sending us away, but he's very displeased with us, he's almost angry with us, maybe he's, he's cutting ties with us, specifically at this interval the Rebbe is showing, no, his love for us is uh, endless, is infinite. And this is something we're going to, Bezaz Hashem, try to explore. Okay, now we want to revisit for a short time a subject we spoke about on Parsha Shlach, and that is the, um, the exile of the Shechina from the time that it left the Lishka Sagazis until finally it left Eretz Yisrael altogether. The Gemara says in Masech the Rosh Hashanah, on the Aflamid Aleph Amid 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 Aleph Am
was in Golos at, at ten different stations, and corresponding to that, the Sanhedrin also was exiled to ten different places. So let's learn about the various stops of the Sanhedrin. The Gemara says in Rosh Hashanah, the Aflam and look at number seven, Ukenegdon Golsa Sanhedrin, and corresponding to the exile of the Shechina, the Sanhedrin was exiled. From where? We have a tradition. They went from the Lishkas Hagozes, from the chamber of the Yun Stone in the Beis Hamikdash, to a store on the Harabayas, to a store. The reason they moved is they didn't want to have to give capital punishment anymore. And then they went from the store to Yushalayim proper. And from Yushalayim they went to Yavne. And from Yavne to Usha. From Usha to Yavne. And to Yavne back to Usha. And from Usha to Sharafram to Shafra'am, and from Shafra'am to Beisha'arim, and Beisha'arim to Tzipayri, and Tzipayri to where? What was the final stop of the Sanhedrin? Tiveria. Tiveria is the final stop of the Sanhedrin. And the Gemara brings a day of Rabbi Lezer Oimer, six exiles the Sanhedrin made. Omar Rabbi Yoichanan! Because the Gemara just made a statement that the lowest, the, the nadir, of descent of the Jewish people was Tiveria. At that point, the Sanhedrin was on the lowest madrega. Amar Rabbi Yochanan umisham asidin ligael. The Mashiach will reveal itself in Tiveria. Okay, it's a Gemara in Shas. It's a Gemara. The Mashiach will reveal itself in Tiveria. If you want to know, where will the Mashiach reveal himself? Barra Park, Lakewood, Williamsburg, Muncie, Cedarhurst. If there's anywhere in America, it's Cedarhurst because we're the closest to the airport. Right? That's for sure. So we're before Muncie and Williamsburg because we have to get to Eretz Yisrael. I don't think there's any Jewish community in the world closer to JFK than Cedarhurst. So if you can't live in Eretz Yisrael, Cedarhurst is the closest place you got. Right? Even, um, even I see people from uh, West Hempstead. Okay, look, you will come to my house and from there we'll take you to the airport. But the Cedarhurst were the closest to Eretz Yisrael. Anyway, but um, if you could go to Eretz Yisrael, you could. It's like, you know, it's like living in JFK, basically. You get the flight patterns, you get, the, you get everything. Um, you know, it's, it's illegal to shine the flashlight at the planes. It's, it's, you know, we're as close to J- John F. Kennedy as we could get. But anyway, the Gemara says that Mashiach will reveal itself in Tavaria. Why Tavaria? Why does Mashiach reveal itself in Tavaria? Why not Yushalayim? Why not Svas? Why not Meiron? Why not, I don't know, Mezbiz? <laughs> yeah? Anapoli, Frankfurt. Why? Why Tiveria? Now the Zayar says a very interesting line, which the Chida in his commentary to the Zayar reconciles with the Gemara. The Zayar says, you know where Mashiach will reveal itself? The Zayar says, in the Galil. Look in the Zayar number 8 in Shemais. So, may Hadar Goina Ida Mashiach, the Kumai Laroy Taaretz Kadyikom Viyiskale Baara, the Galil begin the Ihu, Hu Asar Kadma, the Isharva. Since the Galil was the first area of Eretz Yisrael destroyed, Ba'ara Kadish and the Holy Land, of again, Kach Yiskali Tamon Kadma Lechol Asar. Therefore, Mashiach will reveal itself in the Galil before any other land. You hear this an amazing statement in the Zayar. Because the Galil was the first city in Israel to be destroyed, mm-hmm. therefore the Mashiach will reveal itself in the Galil. So the Chida says, well, in the Shas, it doesn't say Mashiach will reveal itself in the Galil. It says Mashiach will reveal itself where? In Tveria. So the Chida says, well, the Galil is just a general area, but, but Tveria is the specific area. Meaning the Gemara, the Zayar is not arguing on Shas. The Zayar is saying it will be in the Galil, which is true, because Tveria is in the Galil. What did the Ah, uh, well, so and let's 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 speak that out because the Gemara says, how do I know that Mashiach will reveal itself in the Galil? Because it says, Hisnari, shake yourself off, Mayafa, from the dust. So Reb Sender is asking a good kasha. How in that pasuk do we see that the Mashiach will reveal itself in the Galil? How do we see anything about Tveria or the Galil from the pasuk? Hisnari, Mayafa, Kumi. We're going to get to that. Okay. So there's an incredible sefer. This Sefer is one of the early Mikubalim. It's quoted by the Ben Eshchai, and it's quoted by many Svarim. The name of the Sefer is M.S. Liyakov. It was written by the Mikubal Rav Yaakov Sha'altiel Ninyo. And he's an early uh, Mikubal. And he asks, why, why does the Melech HaMashiach have no better spot to reveal himself than in 
uh, in Tavaria. What does he have with Tavaria? What's special about Tavaria that has to reveal himself in Tavaria? Furthermore, he quotes the Yalkut Shemaini. The Yalkut Shemaini basically paraphrases the Gemara. And if you look in the end of the Yalkut Shemaini, where the Yalkut Shemaini also quotes the Pasuk, Hisnari Me'afar, which is also uh, uh, indicating that the Mashiach will reveal himself in Tavaria. And on the bottom, in the footnote 79, he brings the Girsa, Amar Rabbi Yochanan, Tiveria Mashlemes L'Mashiach. Tiveria completes the process of Mashiach. Somehow, Mashiach is a two-pronged attack. Mashiach and Tiveria. What does Tiveria got to do with Mashiach? That's again the question of the Sefer, M.S. Liyakov. And amazingly, there's Yushalmi. Yushalmi and Klayim. The Yishalmi and Klayim tells us about one of our most important Tanoim, one of the greatest Tanoim, a Tana who was, uh, the Gemara considers, the highest Tana, the greatest Tana of all the Tanoim, Rav Meir. Rav Meir, when he passed away, does anybody know where is Rav Meir buried? He's buried in Tavari. But where did Rav Meir die? The Gemara says he died in Asya. He died in Asya. Where is that? I guess Asia? Asia, somewhere in Asia. Well, assume Askia is Asia. He died in Chutzaretz. And he basically, Rav Meir have a idmachleb Asya. He died in Asya. Amar, and as he was dying, he gave word, Imurin levnei Ardi so tell the Jews in Israel, Hamashichon didchon, your Mashiach is here. So basically, what Rav Meir was saying was, come get me. Don't let me die in uh, Asia. Come bury me in Israel. They said, nah. Just put him in the water and, and he'll come to us. Which is a separate subject in and of itself, why they said that. But what the Emes Yaakov focuses on is how did Rav Meir have the boldness to say something which is not true, which is, has no bearing on the truth, and that is, I'm Mashiach. If there's one person who cannot be Mashiach, can never be Mashiach, who has no shot at being Mashiach, if there was one great rabbi who we know for certain was not Mashiach, it's Rav Meir, because he's one of the only Tanoim we know, comes from Esav, from Edom, from Niron Kezar. And one of the qualifications of being Mashiach is you have to come from David HaMelech. And if you come from Esav, you ain't coming from Shevet Yehuda. So how could Rav Meir have the audacity to say that he's Mashiach? Says Emma Yaakov in number 14, Mashiach. So let's quote the Gemara. We've already given many, many shirim on this Gemara. We have a shir of Rameir on Hanukkah. We have a shir on Rameir on Purim. We have a shir on Rameir on Parsha Shlach. We have a shir connecting Rameir to Elul. But we never brought Rameir into the Chorban Beis HaMikdash. But how can we not? You look in the Gemara, clearly the Hakdam of Chorban Beis HaMikdash is the creation of Rameir. So let's say over the famous Gemara in Kedushin with some new Chidushim. And uh, we'll see Mamish Neflois Mitarasenu. The Gemara quotes the Pasuk in Parshas Re'e, Bonim Atem Lashem Alekechem. Says the Gemara, Rabbi Huda holds, when you act like children, you are children. When, you're not, when you don't act like children, you're not children. Bizman Sha'oisin Ritsoinim, Bizman Sha'atem Noigim Minak Bonim Atem Kroyim Bonim, Ain Atem Noigim Minak Bonim, Ain Atem Kroyim Bonim. So what does that mean? That means that's different than your own kids. Let's say you're walking down the street and your kids misbehave. So somebody says, that's your kid? No, 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 it's my wife's. I married his mother, right? You, you can't do that. Your kid is your kid is your kid. It doesn't, you know, you don't have a choice. It doesn't matter how your child acts. Your child is always uh, your child. But Rabbi Yudas is not with the Rebbe Shalom. When you act like a child, they're your child. When you don't act like a child, you're not, you're, you're not their child. You know, you go to graduation. If the kid gets honored at the graduation, that's my kid. If the, if the principal says he has a lot of potential, you say you're, you're the great uncle or something, right? So, no, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. This is your child, no matter what, right? But when it comes to Klal Yisrael, the Rebbe Nishom says, uh, if you act like a child, I consider you my child. If you don't act like a child, you're, uh, you're not my child. Rameir says no. No matter what, you're called children. And Rameir cites four psukim. Shenemar, banim schalim. Foolish children. So we see that even when we're foolish, we're still children. And Rameir quotes another pasuk. Children who have no amuna, meaning even if we have no amuna, 
We're still as children. And Rabbi Meir quotes the third Pasuk. Zera mereim banim ashlisim. Corrupt children. Even when we're corrupt, we're still as children. And then the, the Rabbi Meir quotes the fourth Pasuk. While he used to say that these are not my people, I will say they are the children of the living God. And the Gemara asks, why does Rameir need so many psukim? So the Gemara says, Rameir needs so many psukim. Because I would think they're only considered as children when we ask, act foolish. Not if we don't have emuna. No, even if we have no emuna. Well, ma- that's only if we don't have emuna. But what if we worship idols? No, even when we're mishchasim, we're his children. But I would think, is he your child? Yeah, he's my bad one. He's the bad one. Maybe we're called God's children. Maybe we're called bad children. No, we're always called gitta yingalach. We're always good. So I ask you the following question. We have Machloikas from me and Rabbi Huda. Who do we paskin like? So if you've been coming to the Shiurim, you know this already. That even though the Gemara says in Erevin, that there are two reasons why the Halacha in this case should be like Rabbi Huda. Number one, Machloikas Rabbi Huda Rameir, we always paskin like Rabbi Huda. There's a cloud in Erevin Memvav. Ram Rabbi Yechna, Rameir of Rabbi Huda, Halacha Rabbi Huda. Number two, the Gemara says in Erevin Yud Gimel. We never paskin like Rameir. Why not? Because no one has any idea what he's talking about. Yeah, the Gemara says, look at number 18. The Rebbein Shalom knows that there's no one like him. Why don't we paskin like him? No one could fathom the depth of his opinion. So there should be two reasons why we don't pass him like Rameir. Number one, because Rabbi Huda is, is, is greater in Psak. We always pass him like Rabbi Huda. And number two, because we never pass him like Rameir. And nevertheless, the Rajba comes along, and in two sources, in Chilak Aleph, in Simon Kuf Tzadi Dalet, and in Simon Reish Membez, the Rajba says very succinctly, the bottom two lines, V'yafa gavd Rameir Rabbi Huda, Alach Rabbi Huda, Hacha Rameir Kroi Kadayik. Since Rameir has support from Psukim, this is the one exception to the rule. This is the only time in Shas that we paskin like Rameir. Except for what? The Megillah share, right? Except for Megillah, Tzarek Lekros Kula, this is the only time in Shas we paskin like Rameir. I sta Mishnah Rameir. There was a gentleman, Reb David Kay, whose name was up on the bulletin board. He once asked me, Zechorin Levrach, he once asked me that question. How could we say we never pass in like Rameir if Stam Mishnah is like Rameir? The answer is Stam Mishnah Rameir means as follows. That when Rehuda Hanasi codified the text of the Mishnah, he used the ancient text of Rameir. Because Rameir had the accurate um, uh, text of the original Tanaitic statements. But when Rameir offers an opinion, we never pass in like him. By the way, so I found... An amazing thing, and we once said this before. So the Rajba says, why do we pass him like Rameir? Because Rameir has support from the Psukim. Comes Reb Sha'altiel Ninyo. Comes the Sefer Emes Yaakov, Reb Yaakov Sha'altiel Ninyo. And he says, uh, an amazing reason why in this case we pass him like Rameir. Listen carefully. What's the reason we don't pass him like Rameir? Because his rationale was so deep that the rabbis cannot fathom the depth of his analysis. That's when it's a machloikitz that's relevant down here in this world. Down here in this world, we cannot fathom the Svar Rameir. But if you could find a topic which is relevant to the Reboi then certainly the Reboi of course, understands the depth of Rameir's shita. Whether we are the children of Hashem is not relevant to us, it's how the Rebbe Hashem considers us. Does God treat us like children or does God treat us like Avadim? So Legabi the Ebeshter, regarding the Rebbe Hashem, he is Yorid L'Saif Da'it Hashem. The Rebbe Hashem for sure understands Rameir. So in the eyes of the Rebbe Hashem, he paskins, Ben Kach, Ben Kach, Nekro Banim. I mean, this is the one Indian which is not an earthly Indian, it's a heavenly Indian. So Legabi the Shamayim, the Shamayim is Yorid L'Saif Das Rameir. That's what the Emes Yaakov says. By the way, he says another reason why we pass like Rameir. Because if you look in the Gemara, the Gemara quotes Rabbi Huda, and the Gemara quotes Rameir, and the Gemara quotes the four Psukim of Rameir, and the Gemara asks, why does Rameir need four Psukim? And the Gemara explains why. So the whole Gemara is in Hushita, Rameir. Why is the Gemara handling so much in Rameir? Clearly, because Ravina and Ravashi are 
paskening like Rameer. The fact that the Gemara shak al vatari in the Shita Rameer, that indicates we're passing like Rameer. So let's focus for a moment on this concept of the Emes Yaakov. That even though we never pass in like Rameir, in this instance we're passing like Rameir. Why? Because regarding the Rebbein Shalom, he's for sure Yoyre L'Tzoich Das Rameir. Now in the Sefer Divrei Yoyal of the Satmar Rebbe, he uses this Svara without quoting them as Yaakov. He, he basically was Mechavein on his own. And he uses this to explain a very difficult um, passage in the davening of Rosh Hashanah. We say, Hayoyim haras oilam. Right? What does that mean? Today is the birthday of the world. Hayoyim yamid ba mishpat kol yitzurei oilamim im kivanim im ka. We say, are we like children or are we like avadim? Im kivanim rachameinu karachimav abonim. If we're like children, have mercy on us, like a father has mercy on his children. Ve'im ka avadim einenu chasu yais. We say like this. If we're like children, treat us like children. And if we're like Avadim, then our eyes are dependent on you to issue forth a, a merciful judgment. So I would ask the following question. What in the world does Anshin Knesset Gdola mean? Are we like children or are we like Avadim? We just, they didn't know the Rajva? The Rajva says, we pass on that we're like children. What do you mean, are we like a Banim or like Avadim? It's not up to debate. We pass him, we're like Banim. What do you mean, Im Kabanim? We should say, Hareonu Kabanim, Rachamenu, Krachim of Abanim. We're not Avadim, Rabbi Huda's not right. We don't pass him like Rabbi Huda. What does the Piyud mean? Im Kabanim Kabadim. That was an old Nachlaikis, but we already pass him. The, the Rajban, and Tuchuvais, the Amas Yaakov. And the Samar Rebbe asks, and if we're like Avadim, then our eyes are dependent on you. And then what? And if we're not like Avadim, we don't have trust in you. We're not dependent on you. We know regardless of whether we're like Banim or like Avadim, Ein lanu lehishayin ela alavinu shvat shamayim. So the Samar Rebbe reads the Piyot. This is humble as Gainas. Im kibanim. If we act like children, then lekulei alma. You have to have mercy on us like children because everyone would agree when we're acting like Banim, we're like Banim. Vim kavodim, but if we don't act like children, we're asking like Avodim. So then Rabbi Huda would say, you don't have to treat us like Banim. Nah, forget Rabbi Huda. Eineinu lechot We're going to hinge it on you. This is relevant to you. And if it's relevant to you, then you could be yoyred letoich das rameyer. And you could say, even if we don't act like it, you're going to treat us like Banim. And they're at shetchaneinu v'soytzi kar mishpateinu. Says the Samar Rebbe, if we act like Banim l'kuleyama, then we should be treated like Banim. If we act like Avodim, but it's okay, because we're not going to paskin like Rabbi Huda. You know why? Eineinu l'chot luyais. It's dependent on you. So it's dependent on you. You could be yoyri l'toich dasra meir. Which is better, to be a, a ben or another? A ben. Why? A ben is not always good. An ever is always subservient to his master. I'll give you an example. We're gonna, I wasn't going to say this, but um, let's review another thing we once said. The Gemara and Baba Vassar said that Tornus Rufus Harasha asked Rabbi Akiva that if God loves the poor, why doesn't he give them money? Rabbi Akiva says, God loves the poor. So Torah's Rufus says, so why doesn't he give them something to eat? So Rabbi Akiva said, so that we could get Gan Eden by giving them tzedakah. Torah's Rufus says, you can get Gehenna by giving them tzedakah. Because God said they should be poor, and you're, you're fighting the decree of heaven. Torah's Rufus says, I'll give you a mashal. You know what the mashal is? If a king puts a servant in jail and says, nobody feed the servant, and someone goes and feeds the servant, it's a capital offense. The king is going to imprison the feeder. So Rebekiva says, bad mashal, I'll give you a different mashal. The king puts his child in jail. And he says, no one feed my child. And someone goes and feeds the child. What will the king do? Reward the person. What do we see from here? That you're only allowed to give tzedakah in the sheet of Rameir. According to Rabbi Huda, you're not allowed to give tzedakah. Unless it's Oysin Ritzan Hashemaka. That's why we give tzedakah le'ilu yinishmas Rameir Balanas. Because only according to Rameir, you can allow to give tzedakah according to Rabbi Huda. But there's no such thing as um, Rabbi Huda Balanas. According to Rabbi Huda, you're not allowed to give tzedakah. That's what the, the Parshas Drachim, what? El Akad Meir Aneni. You know? So, um, so based on this, the Emes Yaakov says an amazing thing. 
In the end of days, God's going to want to bring Mashiach. So the nations of the world are going to say, and the angels on high, the Makachugim are going to say, you're going to bring the Jews Mashiach? Why should you bring the Mashiach? They take out a cell phone, Mel of Davening, while they're talking to you, they're checking their phone in Mel of Chazar Sashas. Well, how can you do that? We don't do that in our place of worship. But how can you bring Mashiach? So God's going to say, um, you're right, can't do it. The, but God says, I love them. So the nations of the world are going to say, no, you don't. Rabbi Yehuda says that if they don't act like children, they're not children. So what's Rabbi Yehuda going to say? He has to pull out the last card available. What's the last card? Bonim, Rameir! The only way the Rebbe Hashem could bring Mashiach is Lefishitas Rameir, Bein Kach, Bein Kach, Nekram Bonim. That's what it means, says the Yushalmi, that when Rameir died, he said, I'm Mashiach. He didn't mean he's Mashiach. He means Mashiach cannot come without his argument of Bein Kach, Bein Kach, Nekram Bonim. So the, the question is, why will the Goyim agree that the Halacha is like Rameir? Maybe they'll say, what do you mean? The Gemara Ervin says, Rameir Rabbi Yehuda, Halacha Rabbi Yehuda. So now what, we're going to have to bring in the Rajba into the courtroom? So there's a halacha, says the Emes Yaakov, that if Reuven tells Shimon, you owe me a million dollars, so Reuven wants to take Shimon to court, in whose court do you go to? Reuven's court or Shimon's court? In whose city, right? You owe me a million dollars, Reb Sender, you owe me a million dollars. I wish I did. What? I wish I did. Okay, so where do we go? To my city court or your city court? Your city! You say, Gladstein, look, I have, I'm good. You're the one who has a problem, so you come to my court. So I have to go to your city court. So now the, the nations of the world are having, have a tain on God. They say, God, how could you bring Mashiach? So now we have to go, and we have to go to a Din Torah. So where is the Mashiach? Wherever the Mashiach is going to reveal himself, we're going to go to a Din Torah in that city. So the Ibn Shem will orchestrate, says the Emes Yaakov, that the Mashiach will reveal himself in the city of Tavari. The nations of the world said, you can't bring Mashiach, uh, the Jews don't deserve it. So Yom Hashem says, we're going to take it to a Din Torah. Now the, the Emes Yaakov quotes the Maran HaChaviv in Chosh and Mishpat Simen Chafei. It's brought in the Hagois Beis Yosef Oizvav, this is number 22 on the sheet, the third paragraph. That when you go to a Din Torah, you follow the Psak of the Marda Asra of that city. So they're going to go to where Mashiach reveals himself. And the Marda Asra of Tiveria is who? Rameir, because Rameir is buried in Tiveria. And Rameir is going to say, look, my psak is, Ben kachu, ben kach nekram bonim. So Mashiach, you could come. That's pshat in the Yaakut Shemaini. Tiveria is mashlim Mashiach. Without Tiveria, Mashiach cannot come. That's why there's no better city for the revelation of Mashiach than Tiveria. Okay, Rabbi say, let's circle back. For a moment. You're right. Rame- it, it didn't have to be Tavaria. He was buried in Tavaria. Oh, why did Rameer? He didn't. Rameer wanted, you know, they put him in the water and that's where he ended up. Why, why Tavaria? Why did he end up in Tavaria? I don't know. But the, Maybe, maybe. But the, the question is why does Mashiach have to reveal himself in Tavaria, right? Because that's Rameer. Now, the Ben Yehoyada in Masech Rosh Hashanah quotes the Emes Yaakov. Back to Reb Sender's Kasha. Where does Rabbi Yochanan know that Mashiach will reveal himself in Tveria from? From the Pasuk, what? Hisnari me'afar kumi. Says the Ben Yoyada, take the words, Hisnari me'afar. Take the first and last letters of these two words. He, Yud, Mem, Resh. Spells what? Meir! Right? Mem, me'afar. He, Mem hey yud reish. Mayor, eyes, but you'll say, what do you mean? It's spelled with a hey, not an aleph. Well, one of the rules are aleph and hey are interchangeable. But besides that, besides that, says the Ben Ishchai, that um, the oisios mayor with the, with the four letters are the same as harim. Harim, right? In other words, me, the Rashi Tevois and Saifi Tevois of his snari may offer are. Harim, the mountains, which could also be read if you exchange the Aleph and the Hay. Meir. Says the Ben Ishchai, this is what it means. Esoenai el harim. I raise my eyes to anticipate the Gula to the mountains. Mountains could also be read Meir. Meaning when I raise my eyes, Esoenai, I raise my eyes to anticipate the Gula. Who can I hope for, for the Gula to come? The Harim. The Harim is Oisios Meir. But the question is, 
But why do I have a right to rely on Rameir? We don't paskin like Rameir. May I in How do I have a right to rely on Rameir? We don't paskin like Rameir. You know why? Ezri mayim Hashem. Since it's only no gathery by Nishalaylam, like the Emma Yaakov said, like the Divrei Yoel said, says the Ben Yehoyada, so I have a right to rely on Rameir because this is Ezri mayim Hashem. This is completely dependent on the Rebbe Nishalaylam. So now we could say something incredible. We know, just imagine for a moment, the Rebbe Shalom is sending Nero and Kezar to destroy the base of Mikdash. He's bringing a Makkah. This is the biggest Makkah in history, the destruction of the second base of Mikdash. There was no event worse in the history of the Jewish people than the destruction of the second base of Mikdash. It's worse than the first base of Mikdash. We fast on the 17th of Tammuz, not the 9th of Tammuz. Why? Because 17th of Tammuz is the day the walls were destroyed by Bayasheni, not Bayas Rishon. Bayasheni Chamorlan. But isn't there a rule that before Hashem is Maka, He always brings the Refua? What was the Maka? The Chorban? What's the Refua? Mashiach! So how is Reba Hashem Bayrei the Refua before the Maka? Huh. Just open up your eyes. You just have to open up your eyes in the simple words of the Gemara. The Gemara says he sent Nero and Kezar and he changed his mind and he ran away and he converted and who came? Rameir, Mashiach! But Hashem says, don't worry, I got this covered. I got this covered. Before I send Vespasian, I already paved the way and I already created the Rafua, namely Rameir. Reba Hashem created, it was Mashlim the Mashiach, already created in the city of Tiberia, that Mashiach will be born. By the way, what day of the year is Mashiach born? Tisha B'Av. Says the Ben Yehoyada, Oyem V'Noira. What's the astrological sign of the month of Av? A lion, right? When is Mashiach born? Tisha B'Av. Tiberia, says the Ben Yehoyada, is Oisi Ois. Ari Tav. The lion is good. Chodesh Av is good. It looks like a bad month. Don't worry. I already paved the way. I already created. I already set into motion. Nero and Kezar will skedaddle. He'll convert. Out of him will come Rameir. Rameir will, is the hope. I raise my eyes to Rameir because I realize only, Rame, only through the Shita Rameir can the Rebbe Shem bring the Geula. And the Rebbe Shem created this even before he brought the Makkah of the Chorban Beis HaMikdash. But I think there's another nugget that lays in this Gemara. And that is, if Rameir Shita is correct, that no matter what we do, the Rebbe Shem always demonstrates that we are His children, then when can the Rebbe Shem show this to us? Meaning, at what point in time can the Rebbe Shem teach us? Bein kach u bein kach nekram banim. In Chodesh Nisan, Chodesh Nisan, you know, is a time of love. Chodesh Adar, it's a time of love. We do mitzvahs, we have Maisim Toivim, we have Zechusim. How do we see clearly that even when we're Ein Oisin Ritzoyin Oshel Malkoim, Bein Kach, or Bein Kach, Korim Banim, when would be the only time to show this to us? The best time would be at the Chorben, when we're Mamish Oisin, Ein Oisin Ritzoyin Oshel Malkoim when we're contravening the will of Hashem, when we have sinas chinam in its purest sense, kamsa bar kamsa, when the Rebbe Hashem has the need to send the Roman general to come destroy the Beis HaMikdash, but even at a, at a moment like this, the Rebbe Hashem says, I'm going to show you that despite the fact that I have to part ways with you, even before I destroy, let me just teach you one lesson. Arak ve'ozal ve'nofak minei rameir. The hakdama to the Chorben. It says to the Bribe yes, I'm going to have to destroy the Beis HaMikdash. I'm going to have to throw you into Golas. But wait a second, let me just tell you one thing. Arak v'yazal v'nafak minei rameir. Don't worry. The hakdama to the Churban Beis HaMikdash is the Shita Rameir. Ben kach ben kach I'm sending you away. I'm destroying the Temple. I'm sending you out of Eretz Yisrael. I'm not having a relationship with you anymore. The Shechina is gone. But one thing remains forever. The Hakdama to the Chorim Beis HaMikdash is the creation of Rameir. This is the foundation upon which everything we're experiencing. The three weeks, the nine days, Tisha B'Av, is all Meyusad after we've established the principle Arak v'ozal v'nafak minei Rameir. Meaning, it's a sad time, it's a, it's a tragic time, 
but don't get down too much. Because on the base of it all, on the Nakuda Primus, we always have Shitas Rameir to rely on. So number one, through the creation of Rameir, Rebbe Hashem is Boire the Rafua before the Maka. And number two, the Rebbe Hashem is, so to speak, being Menachem us. He's consoling us. He's being Mechazek us. Don't worry, don't worry. I have to do this. But you can always hang on. We'll never lose the idea that Ben Kach or Ben Kach Nekram Banim. In fact, and that's why the Shvilei Pinchas explains the Rebbein Hashem specifically demonstrated when the Goyim came into the Heichal that the Kruvim were Ma'urim Zebazeh. Now is the time that the Rebbein Hashem shows that the Kruvim are Ma'urim Zebazeh. It's Enois and Ritzon HaShem And why would the Rebbein Hashem Dafka now show Klal Yisrael that the Kruvim are Ma'urim Zebazeh? The Rebbein Hashem specifically at a time where he has to be Machir of the bias. And it's clear we're Enois and Ritzon HaShem Lest you think the Rebbein Hashem is sending us away for good with uh, and we're parting ways permanently. The Rebbe Hashem is teaching us, no, my chiba to you is always there. My love to you is always there. This is the amazing sheet of Rameir. Esa einai el haharim. I raise my eyes. How could we anticipate the Mashiach? Harim, oisi ois meir. But what do you mean we don't pass him like Rameir? No, don't worry. Ezri meim Hashem. This is a machloikis relevant to Rebbe Shalom. And the Rebbe Shalom is yoyred letoich das Rameir. Im kebanim, very good. And even kavodim, even if we act like avodim, eneinu l'cha teluyais. Where our eyes are hinged on you, we know you, even when ein ois and ratzana shalmakaim, you could be yoyred letoich das Rameir. I found an amazing thing. In the Sefer, Veloy Oid Ella. That's a good name, right? The name of the Sefer is Veloy Oid Ella. Rebbe Yo HaKoyin of Izmir, the Baal Sheva Musa, wrote a parish on Pirkei the Rebbe Lezer. He asked the following question. He asked, he wants to know, Kla Yisro comes into Eretz Yisrael in the times of Yeshua ben Nun, and Yeshua ben Nun kills 31 kings of Canaan. Who does he not kill? Amalek. And the Shoftim, they conquer Eretz Yisrael. Who do they not kill? Amalek. And Shaul, he has a hard time killing Amalek. It's like, and the one nation that the Rebbe Hashem said, you got to kill is Amalek. Why did they delay killing Amalek so much? Says the Shevet Moser, even Yaakov Avinu was very hesitant. When was Yaakov hesitant? When Esau was coming toward Yaakov, the Pasuk says, Vayira Yaakov Ma'od, Vayitzer like. Rashi says, he was afraid, Shema Yaharoi, perhaps he would be killed. Vayetzerla, he was distressed, Shema Yaharoi Gacherem, lest he kill others, which simply means he was afraid to kill Esav. And all the Mepharshim ask, why would he be afraid to kill Esav? Esav's coming to kill him. Why was he afraid to kill Esav? And many, many Mepharshim write, the Gemara tells us in the end of Hoyriyos, that what was the nickname they gave Rav Meir? Achirim. Yaakov was afraid to kill Esav because who would come from Esav? Rav Meir. And without Rav Meir, there would never be Mashiach. So Yaakov was afraid to kill Esav. Shema Yaroig Achirim. And therefore says the Shevet Moser, when the Jews entered Eretz Yisrael, they didn't know yet if Rav Meir came forth from Amalek and they delayed killing Amalek until they got another specific tziva from the Rebbe Hashem, because otherwise they felt they were jeopardizing the whole history of the Jewish people. Says the Ben Yehoyada, Mamish, an amazing thing. He says, look at number 27. Bini, the Pasuk says in Mishlei, Lidvarai hakshiva, listen to my words. La'amorai had oznecha, to my statement, incline your ear. The word la'amorai could be scrambled to spell, Lemeir hadas necha. Listen to the argument of Rameir. If you ever get down, if you ever give up hope, we're in the Gullah so long. How long do we have to be in the Gullah? Have we lost eligibility to be redeemed by the Rebbein Shalom? La Amorai Hados Necha. Listen to the Tainer Rameir. The Tainer Rameir is don't worry. Ben Kachu, Ben Kach Nekroim Bonim. Says Ben Yoda, I was in, um, in Frankfurt. And somebody joined us on the trip, uh, a Choshava friend, his name was Rabbi Rafal Ansel from France. And he showed me, he said, Rabbi Gladstein, I want to show you a Ben Yehoyada, Masech de Kedushin. He showed me a Ben Yehoyada, that Ben Yehoyada quotes Rabbi Chaim Vital, that there's only one person, one Tana in history, who was buried standing up. Rabbi Meir was buried standing up. 
Why says the Ben Yayada? Through the Shita Rameir, Kla Yisrael stands tall forever. We never fall, even when we don't do the will of God. Rameir being buried standing up indicates that Rameir gives the Jewish people hope to remain standing tall forever. Because even when we fall, even if we're not when Rabbi Huda would say we're not considered banim, Rameir says bein kach or bein kach nekroam banim. So let's go back to the Gemara and Gittin. The hakdama to the Chorban Beis Hamikdash is before Vespasian is sent. The Rebbeinu Shem A is Machzir Niron Kezar Betshuva. From him comes Rameir. Why? Because before the Rebbeinu Shem is Maka, he's Bore the Rafua of the potential of from Mashiach through Rameir. Number two, before the Rebbeinu Shem casts us away, he says, "Don't worry." Be mechazek yourselves. Don't be misyayesh. Bein kachu, bein kach nekroam bonim. Says the Ben Yoyada, the, the city of Tveria, or Oisius, Ari Tav. Av is not such a bad month. It's bad. But through the sheet of Rameir, Rameir teaches us, no matter what happens, the Kruvim will always be Ma'urim Zebazeh. They'll always be embracing each other. And therefore, what's the name of this month? The month that even though it's a month of tragedy, Rameir teaches us don't give up hope. Rameir is the Hagdama to the Chorban. Rameir gives us Nechama, Koydim Namaka. How does Rameir give us this Nechama? What's the Kayach of Rameir? Rameir says the, the name of this month is Chodesh Av. It's the month that we recognize that no matter what occurs, no matter what happens, the Rebbein Shalom is Avinu of Harachman. He's our Tata. And even if we're Enois and Ritzan is Nevertheless, Bein Kach U Bein Kach Nekram Banim. This is the Hakdama to the Churban. This is the theme of the month. And Be'ezus Hashem, we should be Zoycha that when you do take your plane out of Cedarhurst from JFK, you might want to visit Tveria, and we should be Zoycha to see the Mashiach reveal himself in Herv Yamenu Ami. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.